Hello there, Reject Nation. I'm Greg Alba. I'm John Humphrey. We're gonna watch how Avengers Endgame visual effects were made by Wired. With the stones. Thanos snappy fingers. Top reward tier video request from a man named Lance Dore. Canadian handsome bastard who just got engaged. Ooh. Gonna make her happy on her honeymoon honey bone. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> jeeps. One side was really popular. <laughs> My name is Jen Underdahl, and I was the visual effects producer on Marvel's Endgame. Uh, nice. My main tasks That's are infinity. to work with our directors, John yeah. Anthony, and our studio heads to make sure that the vendors we are bringing on board are the right vendors for oh, the Oh, Joe the and Anthony. This is John Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> I have to look at these two movies as a single project. It's Thanos' movie, Infinity War is. So in 2016, we knew that very early on we were going to need to test this before we even shot a frame of footage to give some sort of ease and peace of mind to our filmmakers that yes, this guy could carry two thirds of the film. We worked with Josh's people hmm. on our production staff to bring him in and work with Joe and Anthony. We did some very early testing in the mocap volume. We had the head cam set up. He's got dots on his face. And That's what it's going to look like. <laughs> So we kind of did this this whole gauntlet, yeah, this whole gauntlet of testing ah. uh, and, and scanning, capturing every aspect of Josh's face in, in different range of motions. So not only was it a technical discovery for us, it was also a character discovery for Josh, Joe, and Anthony. When we found, we, we kind of had imagined Thanos being this big, ah, mean, you know, kind of over the top character. But how Josh played him was beautiful. He, he his performance was was menacing but subtle, terrifying, hmm. in, but in, in, in little flinches. So we realized at that moment that we really needed to have a company that could capture all that and, and pull his performance through the prosthetic so that when you were yeah. like this on Thanos, you felt the so character much imagination. Was, uh, with his yeah. character, because you had to. I wonder how these effects will age. So we too. gave them all this scanning data, we gave them all this footage, and in the end, a couple months later, they turned around a version of Thanos that looked crazy like Josh. Ideally, in any situation when you have a digital mm -hmm. character, you want to have two actors acting to one another. That's where the magic happens, and we can replace it digitally, but we certainly can't manufacture that performance. Mm -hmm. So it's really mm -hmm. important for us to put the actors in a situation where they are speaking to one another face to face, eye to eye, line to eye line. Now it gets complicated by the fact that Thanos is 15 feet tall. If Josh is in movement, for example, fighting with anybody, we put proxies on him. We put like displacement suits that's so that if you have to touch him or interact with him in any way, the that's opposing nice. actor's hands are in the correct position. Eye lines, same thing. We will oftentimes put an a eye line on a pole on a back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> just as scary. Often it, but oftentimes, whatever, we try as that's much awesome. as possible. Uh, to get eyeline to eyeline. Maybe smash a few things along the way. I think it's gratuitous, but whatever. <laughs> so the whole goal with Smart Hulk was to bring Smart Hulk, that's what she calls him. Together yeah. with Dr. Banner. And what was that gonna look like? I put the brains and the brawn together. And now look at me. Best of both worlds. Borrowing from the 2D designs that came from Marvel, we then had to sculpt Smart Hulk into a 3D model. Uh, you always want to have little anchor points in your, your digital characters where you see your actor's features to some degree. I mean, everybody kind of fell in love with him, actually, when we started to see him come to life. And the more we found we incorporated Mark, the more his performance also stayed true to, of course. to the digital performance. When I had the God with the stones, I, I really tried to bring her back. ILM, they had done Hulk That's from so Avengers. Yeah. So we knew that they already knew this character. They knew his skin, how to deal with his skin technically. They we, they knew his musculature inside and out. So really blending him with a more humanoid 
proportioned character was mm -hmm. the right way to do that casting wise. For wow. Her. So we find that in visual effects, the more we stay out of the way of the filmmakers and the actors, the, the better results we're going to get. Uh, the footage is what we derive uh, all good of our artistry yeah. from. So uh, when that is genuine, when that is fluid, when that is moving, we really get the best of both worlds. In a case like Smart Hulk, you want to make sure that Mark is interacting on set with all the other characters case of the Avengers <laughs> compound. He needs to be there with Tony, he needs to be there with Natasha, he needs to be in that scene. So we'll set up a motion capture volume uh, on set. So he's surrounded by cameras and he's in a mocap suit. So again, visual effects needs to really, in, in all of our technical gathering, we need to take a back seat to, to what's happening, all the performance happening on set. Okay. Okay. Oh, here we go. <laughs> So in the case of Captain America, what would a super soldier look like if he had aged 106 years? What would his skin look like? So we did some development with that. Getting Face up. Face up. Say, hey, you know, is, is this where we should be aiming? Once they bought off on what that look was going to be, we then started casting for a skin double, looking around for an old guy. Ah. Person, the same age and face shape of Cap or what Cap would be. He was shot in the same lighting conditions right after Chris performs. He gives the same lines. He, he tries to emulate Chris's performance as much as possible so that it doesn't take a whole lot of hammering when we go tink, onto Chris's face. In addition to the skin double, you also need to give him sort of an older man's body, uh, older man's sort of overall profile. So uh, as you've seen with Skinny Steve, in Captain America 1, Lola is able to, to take significant size off of Chris Evans pretty much in every instance on Captain America 1 where we're shooting Chris Evans. It's Chris Evans. That's his body, and he's a big dude. We need to get him down to a 90-pound weakling. To do so, Lola will do an overall uh, warp on his body and literally squish him down so that he uh, oh, wow. fits in the plate as this character. They did the same sort of thing, though not with as heavy a hand for old Cap. They took some neck off of him, so he wasn't quite as, as beefy here. And we shrunk his shoulders and sort of his overall profile. He like a real old guy. Ooh, yeah. Under the six-year-old uh, super soldier look. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my gosh! Oh my god, so good to see you! Now we've got Endgame Thor. I mean, even worse. Endgame you... Thor has lost everything, repeatedly. So he has dealt with it by eating a lot and drinking a lot and playing video games with Clark and Meek. So to get this character, we fought really hard to make sure that we had a practical solution to this because we've seen it done before. You can put a bodysuit on somebody and, and it can work. Uh, Marvel contacted and contracted Legacy Effects to do the <laughs> oh, and every little hair on that thing, every little I could look like him skin one patch. Day. Super convincing. That'll so be the we new Marvel body. <laughs> it impacts performance. Again, we've got Chris Hemsworth really getting into the part because of uh, the character he's embodying. And for us, it, it was just clean up work, really. And there were going to be natural scenes as he's moving his arms around. There's going to be folds, and you had to kind of suture his uh. into the thing. And so there was a scene down the back that we had to clean up. But by and large, that's Legacy's prosthetic and Hemsworth's hilarious performance. Our work is super easy in those instances because, you know, you're getting the best of both worlds, practical and visual effects. This better with this should win the Oscar. <laughs> it's definitely a, a solid contender for sure. For visual effects? Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> like, in the case crap. Of Rocket, for us, it's pretty easy because we just stole them Guardians. <laughs> uh, we had to put them in new costumes, which was super cool. But I think all of the, Took like the five character minutes. work had been done pretty early on in him, so it was just continuing his arc as a character. Hi. You must be mom. I got the thing come up with your own move. There's no real reason to put dots on Bradley Cooper's face. The difference between a raccoon and a human face, is, they're pretty far off. Uh, we he will, even remember when we're in the room with him for ADR, we'll have different cameras on him so that we can see whatever gesticulations he's doing. Uh, we can see his facial expressions, and we can take all that and we can translate it into that character. I live for the simple thing. Like, how much does this bear hurt? You do have to it's crazy how, like, Bradley Cooper is in the MCU. I know. <laughs> it just never it's registers. <laughs> it's so easy to forget. Yeah. <laughs> and oftentimes, you know, that can come down to just a simple layer of water in the eye that we put in just to, to really pull you 
emotionally into a scene. There's going to so be a time where actors set. don't even need to act. We'll have a body double with Sean Gunn, who is remarkable at getting to rockets four foot high. I mean, he just he folds himself up. It's, it's crazy how he's able to do it and walk and, and jump down from ledges. And those are important, as we talked about. <laughs> Poor Sean Gunn. You want to have your actors acting against one another. And also helps a great deal with camera blocking. So that our camera guy knows how to go from a, a digital thing you know, to, to a live action element. This is the fight of our lives. Whatever it takes. You may have noticed the time suits are a combination of Ant Man, Tony Stark, and Guardians Tech. And that took a quite a while for us to, to land on. God, these effects are so good. Right? <laughs> Jeez. We, we knew we were going to build Ooh. it anyway because we had nuts. nano on and off with Tony's tech. So it ended up being that the costume department, they didn't have time to develop, fit, and fabricate the, all the costumes for this. Oh, come on, look wow. at that. It looks That's like they're crazy. really wearing yeah. costumes. <laughs> That's nuts. That's insane, yeah. Uh, Challenge there. I'd never <laughs> question if those were CGI costumes. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> the notion of having the helmet be made of the Guardians of the Galaxy breather mesh, that allowed them to travel <laughs> in a different space. We have some early development of them with that kind of being a bubble around their head. But as soon as we started seeing it come up in the post this footage, the directors were like, I don't think that looks as heroic as it could possibly look. <laughs> so we went ahead and developed helmets for the suits. The Guardians tech then just became the visor. We shot this scene before Infinity War because it took two years to make it. Provided us with an overall map of where the different beats Man, this place. scene in IMAX. And we staged oh, our so amazing. accordingly. There was a lot of nondescript areas, but then we had some defining moments where we would try and make it recognizable as an area with a collapsed A, for example. Yeah, I was just or focusing on more Spider Man sure swinging. Yeah. Coming over was distinguishable in sheer and, and gave you that sort of that impact of, of water rushing. <laughs> Don't worry. She's got help. How do you get this good? <laughs> I'm making visuals. How do you get that far? <laughs> Everybody was you are many people. So being on the stage with all of these tremendous actors was pretty pretty cool moment to, to, to witness that. It was pretty energetic and and fundamental. I think people understood what they were. Ultimately, we ended up having to rotor some of our characters off during specific action beats and then completely replace the entire background. That happened quite a bit. It gives the filmmakers more flexibility. It allows them to steal parts from one performance. How do you choreograph this? I'm getting a headache. So our building I know. sets in full CG really allows our filmmakers a lot of flexibility, not only with their live action elements, but with the digital replacements when you have a beat that doesn't cut together as smoothly as you'd like. God, that's very sh Cat vs. Cat mm -hmm. is an example of a lot of green screen uh, being shot for what you wouldn't otherwise think was an entirely digital synthetic environment. We had a very <laughs> bare bones set. Really? Um, when they were up on yeah. the walkway, for example, we had that part built. We had the stairs built, but pretty much everything else was a digital. Oh my thing. goodness. All the glass, all the building, all the background. I feel like the there's some digital touch ups, but damn. The background is a, is a plate of New York. New York skyline at the appropriate height uh, so that you can get the building <laughs> tops and the distant background. Oh, this movie has to like get an Oscar nomination at minimum. God. And then you've got your building structure. So the girders, the millions, the, all the glass, all the reflections off all the internal glass, uh, the plants, the telephones, the desks, uh, every little section of wow. glass in that environment. Digital. To oh, shoot wow. it, we had Chris Evans act both parts, and then the moments where they were of in the body double. <laughs> <laughs> you get the true fight moments, and then whenever the face of the body double was visible, we can convincingly do face replacements. So why not get your hero falling you know, 30 feet in the air? Why not get your hero getting you know punched? pretty hard, we're able to do it. So with that sequence, it was a combination of Chris Evans shooting each side, and then when they interacted with the body double, 
Uh, that is a full wow. stop. I'm going to shout out to the stunts team because they took some pretty hard oh. falls, uh, smacking wow. down the stairs. So it was a really impressive stunt. Oh, yeah. We were all pretty excited when Captain Marvel came out and when we knew that we were going to get to work with his character. Luckily, we were standing on the shoulders of the oh, great cool. yeah. for us to <laughs> develop this really beautiful binary look that we were able to just get in the hands of, of our vendors. That development was happening as we were posting, so it was a little bit of us chasing them down the line, but in the end, I, mean, I think I, I really love where they landed with that look. Cool. Her suit, every time you see it in the movie, when she's in her full costume, is digital. Again, the designs for those suits were not ready in time for us to photograph Brie, so... Oh, really? Okay. And she's rescuing Tony Stark. When you see her come back when she's talking to Nat in the Avengers compound with Rocket and, and Nebula, and then in the final battle when she comes back and kind of saves the day, that's all the digital suit. The rat. <laughs> it's completely CGI rat. In our world, for visual effects, we do want to try and get as much practical as we possibly can. Our supervisor made a bet with the line producer that we would have to replace the rat that uh, appears when Scott Lang is coming back from the quantum realm to San Francisco. And Dan insisted that we could find a rat that was trained that could actually behave on set. Uh, and our line producer was convinced we were going to have to replace it. For those of you who are curious, that is not a digital rat. For all the things that we do and for all the things we replace, <laughs> uh, that is actually a practical mm -hmm. acting rat. I don't have his name. Dad. He's really there. Where'd he go? He's good at his job. <laughs> that rat better get more work. Dr. Doolittle's coming out. Yeah. Hell yeah. The blip effect that we ended up calling it, the sort of post snap, people disappearing, uh, like that was months of development. And it was supposed to be quiet. It was supposed to be elegant. You know, a little bit of pain mixed in, but the pain was really supposed to be felt by the audience and their characters disappearing. So. We wanted to, to give that silence to the viewership. It's okay. It was Sony and Disney's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Capturing that, we, we did about several months of, of development. We just kept running sim after sim and landed on something. Maybe he can wear more real suits now. Really? Yeah. Fell in love with. It's just oh, don't. I didn't even think about Sony out. not being able to have Marvel's to, yeah. VFX team. Yeah. Let's get the, the PlayStation team. The, <laughs> the characters reform on screen did come up, but I think everybody could visualize pretty clearly that that would just be a little too weird. You don't really want to see that, and much more powerful that happens off screen. Tony Snap. That was challenging in that we knew the emotional weight that that was going to carry. We, as, a, as, as our part in it, had to take a very back seat to that moment, to that performance. So technically having the background in there, that was not a problem. But finding the right tone of, of the tendrils of the Infinity Stones, eating away at the suit as the suit is struggling and fighting to protect Tony. And you know in that moment that he's not powerful enough to withstand what's coming. And to be able to, to, to portray that in a very quiet, visual way and be in the background of what Robert was doing in that moment, well, it was that's what it took some time to get that right. You'd be lucky to find a dry eye on that one. Hmm. We're gonna be okay. Thank you, Liz. I don't. It's gonna be really hard for me in my career to top achieving a Thanos and a Smart Hulk. I mean, those characters, mm -hmm. for a visual effects person, I mean, those, oh, yeah. those are pretty, pretty cake. So I'm enormously proud of the work that, that we did and of the vendors who came to the table with their A game and continually challenging each other. A game. Get better and better. So the fans from the studio and everybody really got performances from, from these characters that I think will live on in history in a pretty significant way. <laughs> Still awesome. Yeah. Oh. 
Nibble tooth! <laughs> Sandman. Thanos is side. Uh, uh, go, go. Go! <laughs> Damn it, now! Did you see this? What are you waiting for? Couldn't hear what he said over there. <laughs> Look cool, everyone followed. Uh, just said to go that way. You know what this video made me realize? I'm a jerk. Yeah, for crapping all over CGI yeah, all the time. Yeah, I'm serious like that. Hey. Because I remember when we reviewed Infinity War, and I was like, no, there are times where Thanos looks, you know, a little fake, and it really distracted me. When I watched this video, I'm like, there was so much that was CGI that I didn't even realize was CGI. That is the <laughs> truly mind-blowing thing about yeah. CGI. And I never credit for those things. That yeah. Yeah, I watched once a Wolf of Wall Street CGI breakdown, and I was like, what oh, is this going to be? Switzerland and stuff, yeah. But even like the beach in my like that's oh, yeah. like a completely constructed beach, and then like there are so like so many movies have CGI you never thought was necessary. The amount of different effects in this movie alone, and the different gags they got to pull off is mind blowing, man. Well, like what they said with the quantum realm suits, I was like, what? That wasn't. They weren't really wearing those. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sure they did like digital alterations, especially when they had mm. to like transform out in the helmets or whatever. That shot when they're all walking, I, I'm like, oh, those are cool new suits they built. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I had no idea that was not real. That totally blows my mind that that isn't real. I gotta give it to, to yeah, I guess there's there's a va big value in what like videos like this help to teach me. One of the things I, I love the most is when she's talking about how they consider what's going on in the movie to approach the effects like we don't want to get in the way of the performance for this part or we yeah. know that this moment has to carry a certain amount of weight and going back to what you said about feeling bad about criticizing CG I do think that that is like it really is up to a good movie to make sure that it presents its CGI well because you know like a movie like Battleship I felt kind of bad for all those animators who probably put in a whole lot of time on that yeah. work and who are, you know are getting panned it's okay to criticize when something looks fake and it's but okay to acknowledge it's... in something like Infinity War if you notice the effect. I, I don't think that's bad to do. But I think it'd be better to balance it out with pointing out definitely. when things look really real. Definitely. And especially definitely. maybe doing so, because I, I usually don't watch these kind of videos on my own. It's like, if we're being asked to or whatever. Mm. Um, I like, uh, that's just not like quarter crew. I love watching, of course. Yeah. And uh, something like this. I usually don't because I have this like weird preservation of magic. I don't want to pull the curtain back too much. But then when I watch them, I'm so fascinated by what's going on. I just don't want to be on the forefront of my mind. But I've seen Endgame so many times yeah. that I wouldn't mind learning about it by this point. So that's what I mean, to watch a movie yeah. three times, last time being on the biggest screen I could ever watch it on with the clearest quality I could ever watch it on, and to really be like, what? That fight between the two caps, that whole building was, not, was all made up? Yeah, <laughs> right? Like, that is nuts. Oh. I, I had no idea. So I feel like it might be good to like maybe do a little bit of research before we film some certain movies. It's easy to chalk, chalk up like, looks fake, looks real. Even the ones that look a little bit fake or you can tell are, are, are not real, it's like they clearly Clearly, still bust their asses for months on end yeah. to try to make it as believable and tangible as humanly mm -hmm. possible. Something like Smart Hulk, as she called <laughs> it. I don't know. I get crap for this. I don't know why. I would I like that effect more than I like the Thanos effect? Like the Thanos effect is art, like super impressive, absolutely. Mm. And Josh Brolin really does bring that performance to life, mm. and this, as well as these visual effects artists. But for Smart Hulk, there were so many times where uh, it's like, of course, sometimes I could see that it's you know not real, but there were times where I just it looked pr like practical effects yeah. to me. I was. Uh, instantly able to get lost in that performance of Smart Hulk because of the visual effects they provided for it. Whereas I remember yeah. Thanos took a little bit of readjusting for me when I watched it. Yeah, and I mean, the CGI over the years has taken so many strides in like skin textures and hair textures and stuff like that. And yeah, a lot with lighting. Too. Yeah, especially in all the, yeah, these crazy uh, physics engines that they have. Uh, and yeah, to, to render those effects in a way that do move and breathe like a real person might is super impressive regardless of the times when it maybe goes in and out. But yeah, yeah. like Hulk especially and the way the interactions go, because that's the other hard thing and they brought that up about Thanos is 15 feet tall. We gotta make, you know, we have to cheat. <laughs> Jeez. You, yeah, you, you said that during the, the reaction, like how do they choreograph all these things? And it really is mind-blowing yeah. when we think you've got a small strip of dirt and we're gonna create some magic camera movement that's really gonna zoom way out from yeah, that strip of dirt. You can't tell what these things are like, okay, did they just have like a few people and then they just digital effect the rest of the choreography? Yeah. 
choreography? Like, do they make it up on the spot? Like, oh, it would be cool if we just did this moment right here mm -hmm. while they're doing, and I'm sure sometimes they do that. But when you're looking at the footage they filmed in front of the green screen with all those actors and, yeah. and the amount of things they did set up, every one of the heroes versus villains moments was preconceived before they started going on the computer and adding shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's yeah. nuts to me. It's like when I watch a movie like Ready Player One, I did enjoy the hell out of. I remember Spielberg making some comment of, yeah, they added things in there. I didn't even know were in there. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I thought some of that fight was like. Yeah. Who are, oh, they added that in later. Or mm -hmm. But you're like, no, these camera movements are real camera movements. They're not just in computer camera movements mm -hmm. that they're altering. So. Or at least, you know, a lot of them. I think if you have yeah, yeah, completely for... CG, like nothing on screen is practical. Because that's what always fascinates me too, is what it must be like for a cinematographer, because I'm sure you're jumping back and forth between some scenes that are a hybrid of practical and digital, and then some scenes that are completely digital. And, yeah. you know, wasn't it Rango or somebody that had like a, a legit, well-known cinematographer doing this completely digital movie? Not that this video, you know, wasn't completely satisfying, but I kind of wish we could see some more about that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the cinematography side of, of things, yeah. Yeah, like how a cinematographer gets involved with things that are digital well, yeah. and, yeah. Well, I noticed the most real-looking Thanos shots, I screenshot of one, are the ones where it's up close. And I, yeah. and I find that really impressive how the closer you are to these characters, like Smart Hulk, like Thanos, the more real they look. That's which, good which is That's just great, which is, like, way better than, oh, the closer you look, the more fake it looks, you know? Like, we, we have to keep it far, or also look fake. But, so I think that's even more impressive that yeah. they can pull that side of things off because whenever I thought Thanos looked practical it's on the close-ups. Well yeah and it seems like they were pretty conscientious with this movie about their approach to the effects and you were talking about Oscars but I think this is a great example of a movie that does deserve and earn such a, you know, nomination at the very least because, you know, there is a ton of CG, but there are a lot of different approaches to it. They're all put into the movie in what feels like appropriate places, and with little things like that, it's like, it's more important than when we're up in Thanos' face and we're feeling the emotion that he look as real as possible, yeah. and they put that effort, that time. Because CGI is also, from what I understand a time economy too. You know, some things turn out the way they do just because there wasn't enough time yeah. to take them further. That's do why have to... Sonic the Hedgehog, how they remake it, is gonna look a lot better. But so much more time. better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, they'll just <laughs> drop a patch from the game right in. I watched a Core Recruit video recently where they covered Captain America the First Avengers. So they talked a lot about what she was talking about here. Bobblehead Steve. But having like doubles there yeah. and then you have to do the same shot two to three times, like one with Chris Evans, one with double, and one with no. I find that very, very impressive and challenging because that's so time consuming and challenging. Yeah. And the fact that you have to make three different shots all work together. Then they said they had to hire an older actor, basically hired him to try to exactly duplicate the movements. I remember when I saw Captain America and the first time in Endgame, I honestly was really late to the game to register that that was old man Captain America. <laughs> and I didn't register. That, so that like was half hour after the <laughs> Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> I thought that guy stole Cap Shield. Yeah. <laughs> he brought it back, you know, from the past. It's Cap's yeah. grandpa, right? And then the sequel, he's going to go have to find Cap and save him yeah. from this guy. Right? Bring Chris Evans. But it was a setup. I didn't register, especially that that was Chris Evans there because those effects mm. look so damn real. I thought they were just some old guy. Was, then I was hearing yeah. the voice. And I was like, what? Is that, that is Chris Evans, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I was wondering too, because old age is a hard thing to do. And it's fast, it's, yeah, to take, you know, basically the both just gray and hair. splice, yeah, you know, put a wig on him. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Well, how they achieve that because I know that's been a conundrum for effects for a while is, is fascinating to a beautiful marriage of skin textures. And I think the other thing you have to really give credit to as well is, of course, the VFX artist. At the same time, we'll really want to make a lot of the VFX work is if you don't have performers who can ultimately use their imagination to the best of its abilities. When you watch <sighs> Thanos about to kill Tony Stark and in Infinity War, it's like, you know, harrowing. It's uh, mm -hmm. tapes and rips through. You're like, oh no! But then when you watch this behind the scenes footage, you know, this Josh Brolin in a goofy suit, and then you got this, like, oh, the head on top. Yeah. <laughs> That's and the thing. They is... have to use their imagination for this really sad moment. Huh? Yeah. Well, and too, I th I've thought of Christian Bale, oddly enough, because also for Josh Brolin and uh, Mark Ruffalo, you've got a camera here throughout your performance, so you always have something directly in your field of vision, which has to be extra distracting. Why do you think of Christian because he's just distracting, distracting in the middle oh. of the scene. <laughs> You've got something unnatural to the scene right in the middle of your field of vision. Yeah. You know, obviously got to be a self-conscious thing. 
but to do like these powerful performances in scenes that are, are that rely he so heavily where you can't really use environment the physicality of the conditions and and this and uh, whatever the production design has laid out for you makes a big difference in what an actor can or can't do and like where it's like these are gifts that he can use or she can use to make it that much more real for them so for all these actors to get so real and have to really work past flip like yeah this isn't really a spider-man suit it's some black thing with a bunch of dots this isn't really hulk you know like well, to work past all that is really really impressive on an acting scale and that just goes to enhance the visual effects to look more real too. oh yeah and the fact that you must be watching this especially it hit me that so many of these big glossy super spectacular impressive movies have got to be mostly made in just like a warehouse with like right. some dirt, a stone, and a lot of green, yeah, yeah. you know, and and that makes just the you imagine these processes as being these they are huge productions of people, but yeah, now I'm just imagining like Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. showing up to a warehouse, <laughs> yeah, then. and it must be totally different acting experience than I would have imagined, I guess, through that lens. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Do you hope that Avengers Endgame wins the Oscar for Best Visual Effects? Comment below. Will you care if they do or don't? Mm, that sounds interesting of a question. We'll keep it anyway. You guys can subscribe to The Real Rejects. Click that notification bell to get notified whenever we got a YouTube video up. And you can check us out on Patreon where we do weekly Q&As, TV show reactions, stream along, sync up. But there's also options for several shows where you can have reaction highlights included. The choice is yours. He does music video reactions weekly. Lance Door, thank you so much for sending this over, buddy. I hope that soon you can officially decide where you want to honeymoon with your future wife to be. I say you book a concert for California, come out here, visit us, have a little bachelor party, just John, Greg, yeah. and you. Oh yeah. We get you to cheat on your soon to be wife. Yeah. You're like, please, man, don't tell her. And I'm like, look, I won't have to tell her. I have these photos I took of you with the stripper when she was doing things that are not legal. Well, you'll have to pledge $5,000 a month to our Patreon page unless you want her to find out. Let's just say, uh, Nati, Natai, Natai, Nati. Natai, Natai. Natai. Nagatai. Will not tie the knot <sighs> under our Wa bri watch? bribery. Yeah. Bri bribery. Influence. We're done.